Hi, everybody. Welcome to Katie in the Morning. I'm Katie Page, Director of Member Relations at the National Association of Healthcare Assistants. I hope you all had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Today is Tuesday, May 29th, 2018. Uh, you know, as we go through the CNA course, we learn a lot of things. Uh, we learn vitals, we learn skills, we learn peri care, of course, uh, transferring a resident, but there's so much that we learn outside of the CNA course. So today I wanted to give you guys kind of a fun little tutorial about some things that we learn outside of the CNA course. So here are six things that you didn't know that you signed up for. Number one is a referee. You are going to handle situations where residents have disagreements with other residents, dispute between family members, uh, family members and resident arguments, coworker to coworker, and coworker to management. Uh, for example, with the resident to resident disagreement, uh, you may have, and I've seen this so many times over my career, where you have two ladies in the same room, they have a shared room, and they absolutely adore each other while they're together. But once they separate, you have the one talking about the other, one accusing the other one of stealing, this one was up all night and she kept me up all night. Residents with alarms, you'll hear this a lot from their roommates, uh, where she was climbing out of bed all night, or he was climbing out of bed all night and kept me awake. So you're going to have to kind of be that referee and tone down those situations. Uh, family members, I've seen several situations where, uh, you know, the, for example, there was a lady that I took care of years ago who had twin daughters. One was the power of attorney, one was not. Well, what one thought was right for mom, the other one didn't. So they were constantly bickering back and forth. And unfortunately, that situation escalated to the point where management had to get involved. But as CNAs, uh, we're oftentimes one that, ones that kind of step into those conversations or the family members come to us for advice or even just to vent to us. So we really have to be that referee. The family member to resident disputes uh, is another thing that we are right there, uh, especially being we are a mandatory reporters. If those situations get out of hand, we also have to report those. And then finally, um, coworker, coworker to coworker, coworker to management. Um, this is probably the most common one. You know, somebody goes in, they get written up. Uh, they come back out and they'd have nothing good to say about the manager. Uh, you could have situations where the nurse is trying to do their own thing, the CNA is trying to do their own thing, and they kind of clash together. So that takes another CNA or another coworker to kind of tone down those situations and make sure it doesn't escalate to the point where it makes a scene in front of those residents. Uh, the second thing that you may come across is being a, a therapist. You are going to hear, hear feelings from residents. You're going to hear feelings from coworkers. You're going to hear feelings from family members, you're going to hear feelings from the community. So you really have to kind of learn that skill of listening with an open mind, um, especially with CNA to CNA conversations. It may not even work, pertain to work. Um, there could be somebody that comes to work, you know, that bad relationship with their boyfriend. You're going to hear all about it because they're spending eight hours a day with you on a daily basis. Uh, those friendships kind of um, mature and are created sometimes without even realizing it. You know, the, the girl that's pregnant and is for the first time and is worried about that labor, you're the one that's going to hear about it. Uh, the one that had a terrible morning, you know, her kids were acting a fool and her car wouldn't start and then she locked her keys in her car. You're going to hear all of it. So you really have to have that therapist type, uh, type personality when it comes to being a CNA as well. Uh, the third thing that I thought was kind of fun is you have to be a sanitation engineer. Um, CNAs are required to carry three times their body weight in trash every single shift, at least twice a day. You're going to have to learn how to switch those trash cans out, um, kind of contain them as you're carrying down the hallway to keep them hidden from the, the naked eye. Um, I call them sanitation engineers because my or a garbage, garbage disposal person. They used to be called garbage men, but I don't think that's politically correct anymore or acceptable. Um, my uncle is a sanitation engineer, and that's what he calls himself, so that's where I adopted that term from. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to tackle the last three things that you didn't know you signed up for. We look at NACA as the professional organization that supports the CNA, just like the American Association of Long-Term Care Nurses supports the RNs and LPNs. As a state executive, I can tell you that the energy and the empowerment that this organization has given to our state has truly enhanced the depth of membership and the work that we do as a state association. I am very, very proud of our connection and our partnership with the National Association of Healthcare Assistants. For more information, visit us online at nakacna.org or call 417-623-6049. 
Welcome back to Katie in the Morning. Today we're talking about six things you didn't know that you signed up for when you became a CNA. Uh, we kind of went through the first three and then now the next one is a medical doctor. I think you guys, anybody who's been a CNA for more than a year has had this experience. As soon as people learn that you are in the medical field, that's when the questions start pouring out. Uh, does this look sprained to you? Does this look infected to you? Will you pop this for me? That's my favorite one. Or do you think I should have this go looked at? Uh, it doesn't matter if you're an LPN, an RN, restorative aid, a med tech, ter nurse tech, CNA, CNA level one or two, as soon as people hear and know that you're in the medical field, that's when they start asking you questions constantly. Uh, I think it's hilarious. Um, people that you even see on the streets, if they see you in scrubs, uh, the, you just have the most random people come up to you and ask you questions. Oh, my, th my throat's kind of sore. My ears are draining. Do you think I should go to see a doctor? Well, if you think you should go see a doctor, then by all means, go see a doctor. Uh, you don't have to be in the medical field to know when there's something wrong, but especially our residents. Oh my Lord, I love it when our residents start asking us questions about their health, you know, and we are their, their care provider, but those questions should be directed towards a nurse, but that's obviously what CNA is there for as their eyes and ears, that they're feeling un uncomfortable, they're feeling something change as something that we report to the nurse, but make sure you're letting your nurse know that they're voicing these things for you too. I just keep going back in my head to the pop it thing because I've had so many residents, we pop this for me, we squeeze this for me. Um, no, I won't. We'll get the nurse and we'll let her take a look at that. Uh, next up, we have a receptionist. Okay. So from here on out, you will be expected to know where the nurse is at all times, how long it's going to take them to finish their current task, what activities are for the day, uh, what was on the menu for lunch, the name of each family member, even if they only visit once a year, when everyone's bath days are, when their birthdays are, when the beauty shop opens, when they last got their hair done, what their shower days are. From here on out, you must know all. And when I mean all, I mean everything. Uh, you're going to have to know what the snacks are for the day, uh, when bingo days are, um, when the last time the last little laundry was done, when towels are be expected to hand it out, when the snack cart comes around. I mean, you are going to have to know everything that goes on in that facility. Um, some facilities allow their CNAs to answer phones. Some don't. I think that's kind of funny because even if you call the office here, my voice changes when, compared to Katie in the morning as I sound on the phone. It's just like a trigger that changes. So you're going to have to get your receptionist on when you answer the phone and do like, hi, welcome, or thank you for calling ABC Healthcare. My name's Katie. How may I direct your call? And so it's, it's, um, it's kind of a know-all of know-all when it comes to being a receptionist. Um, one of the things you're definitely going to have to keep in mind is like their shower days because they're constantly going to be asking about that, uh, when their favorite activities are. Um, if you want to kind of get a one up on them, find out what it is they like to do and then let them know ahead of time, hey, today's bingo day or hey, they're doing crafts down in the dining room. Um, you just kind of have to be the expert about everything that happens in that building, whether it's on your hallway or not, whether you were there the day before or not. You're going to get questions about, um, last night we had that thing for supper. What was it? Well, I wasn't here, so I don't know. But that is something that you're going to have to find out because you're going to get those questions during your career. And then last but not least, you have to be an entrepreneur. Um, the sixth thing that you have to be as a CNA is somebody who is willing to kind of create and learn and go with the flow. Um, as an, an, a constantly evolving and changing industry, <clears throat> we have to be able to kind of go with that, be willing to do those things because 90% of the time those changes are coming in a good way. There is something that has happened somewhere else that has triggered this regulation or rule to be put into place. Um, like charting, for instance, there are some facilities that are still doing paper charting, but it's evolved so much that there's like a billion different kinds of way to chart. There's point click care, point center care, AccuNurse. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. And having that willingness to change and adapt to those things is definitely going to help you get a step up on your career and your profession when it comes to kind of staying top notch and ahead of the crowd. I thank you guys all for joining me today, and I will see you right back here tomorrow for Katie in the Morning.